Well, yes, uh, Daybreak Show still on on Rock City 101.9 FM. Yes, yes, yes. This is the voice of the people. That's what we do to ensure that we keep you informed, educate you, and entertain you. And of course, uh, when there are issues that appears to be naughty of national interest concern to you, indigenous citizens, resident, proud Nigerians, we get involved and ensure that your voice and your position is clearly, clearly uh, listed. That's what we'll be doing. That's what we'll do this morning on the Citizens Forum. Dele Ayodo is my name. As I mentioned earlier on, we'll be checking out events that ruled the National Assembly in 2017. That's the other arm of government. We'll have a member of the upper arm, uh, Senator Landry said you should not yet hear, but in a couple of minutes, I expect that he will join us uh, so that we can get his opinion and analysis. Of course, we also permit you to ask questions. But like the style uh, is, we want to keep to that style only on those issues that have been raised. We have uh, compiled them, some of those events that we think are of more importance. We, may, we will not be able to take all the stories definitely we will not but the ones we picked those are the ones we want you or we want to discuss and get the opinion of distinguished senator larry Tedlo show um yes this is the last citizens forum the last edition for the year 2017 tomorrow on the open day just keep the debate going on i also mentioned it earlier on i want you to tell us just send the name to our short code down three two one two zero. Remember, you have to type arrows in case first. Give us the name of our first guest analyst on this program for the year 2017. Whoever is picked, that's the fastest finger, like they say, will have the opportunity to sit here with us on the first open day for the year 2018, in addition to other things that we will. Uh, give the person yes we want to keep faith in us just as you've been keeping faith with us it's been a wonderful wonderful 52 weeks running out we take this short break hopefully by the time i come back i'll be introducing our guest all right stretch to business it's my pleasure to introduce to you the um, guest this morning the senator representing ogun central Senatorial District at the 8th Assembly, uh, Prince Larry Tedo Show. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, listeners. Yeah. All right. Uh, we are doing a review of the year 2017, specifically the National Assembly this morning. Um, obviously, we have categorized or we have um, drawn up some of the headlines that made the uh, importance this year. We cannot take out of some of them. But before she goes into those headlines, let me um, ask. 2016 coming to 2017, um, there was this perceived frosty relationship between the, uh, the legislative arm and the executive arm of government. Do we still have that or did that also prevail in 2017? Oh, well, of course, um, we all know the foundation of this eighth assembly and the challenges we had uh, in electing our president, uh, which uh, for the first time we have uh, an independent uh, president in terms of being uh, independent of the executives, uh, which I believe is a progress with democracy in Nigeria. That cannot come without its challenges. And um, I would say over the months, we have been improving in terms of uh, uh, making the relationship with the executive better. So I believe we are now at a uh, stabilized uh, position. Hmm. All right, that's the position stabilized. Okay, can we have the first headline, please? Thank you. Are you satisfied with this amendment? Because if you've been following reactions of Nigeria to this amendment, there are so many opinions that says that amendment did not go far in addressing 
issues that would change the lives and style of Nigerians? Well, uh, if you positively, if you look at the process of uh, making this amendment uh, achievable, uh, you know that uh, the process is a very long and tedious one because you have to involve every Nigerian uh, elected uh, institution that is both the national and the state. Uh, even to get the National Assembly to begin the discussions on amendment is an achievement. So I believe Rome wasn't built in a day and uh, the process has begun. Um, I believe that's the first phase. And uh, we could always revisit amendments that the Nigerians think is not good enough. Or we can also revisit the issue of adding any other amendments that the Nigerians think is uh, very uh, necessary. The seventh assembly tried this too, but it got stopped at the table of the president. Um, what do you see with this one? Do you think it go through, or there may other be there may could be other things that will also cripple it at the last stage? Well, I believe uh, Mr. President is a listening president, and especially as regards the hearing of the masses. So, if the masses are uh, you know, on the same page with the legislature in terms of the amendments that we have approved, uh, I believe Mr. President will not delay in confirming those amendments. Do you also foresee another attempt on constitutional amendment before the end of the Eighth Assembly? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I believe there are some issues in the proposed amendments that. Uh, can be revisited before the end of this assembly. Such as? Well, there's so much noise about uh, issues relating to quote unquote restructuring. And I know it is a very popular uh, request from Nigerians generally. So we cannot be in the, the National Assembly and uh, behave as if we don't uh, listen to the people, the people that put us there. Okay, at last, that's uh, one first number, uh, first major point to pick. They do listen. Uh, those of you who think they don't, you hear it from one of them. They do listen and hear those calls. Okay, the next story. Prime Minister needs to fast track passage of the Never Given Reform Bill. Senate President Nicola Sarkozy approved the Never Given Reform Bill in the Senate on Tuesday. It is not, it is not, many of these did not happen. Uh, this promise the Senate President mentioned that uh, you people will fast track the amendment of the PIB bill. It still there did not happen. The road reform did not happen. Why? Well, I am sure you know that uh, this process, yet again, does not involve the Senate alone. Uh, there must be concurrence with the House of Representatives. Um, apart from that, the, all the various bills mentioned there uh, with committees that have been trying their best to ensure they get to the end of uh, a successful uh, presentation of these bills. But um, this year, many things happened at the same time. For example, the government of the day uh, was very interested in reversing the budget year so that uh, the budget year will commence this channel. Because of that, we had to suspend plenary for some time to look into all the, the budget proposals from the various uh, MDAs. And uh, that, of course, means that we could not attend to any bid and focus just on the budget, which has been the case in the last four or five weeks. So um, these are days that we should have been trying to process this, because if we wanted to achieve it before the end of this year. so. 
So everything is changed. Mm -hmm. Well, Professor, the next show is going to be about budget, and it's obvious that the 2018 budget will not be passed in 2017. That's for sure. Okay, can we have the next story? Okay, thank you. Senator uh, like so we've been carrying this over this crisis argument about what to do, how to handle the budget. We still have it um, as we speak. We just uh, tactically also talk about it. When will this be resolved and why do we continuously have these wranglings between the executive and the legislative when it comes to budget issues? Well, I believe the bedrock of the problem that we still have this kind of uh, situation is because of the relationship between the, the minister in charge of that particular uh, budget and the committee in the Senate or in the House of Representatives that is supposed to look at the proposal and come up with the final conclusion, that is the appropriation of that budget. Where there is uh, a working relationship, there should, no, there should be no issue concerning this project uh, process. Because it's just like, for example, I'm chairman of health. I mean, I have a decent relationship with my minister. So if my minister should get me a budget that says that he wants to build the primary health center in Shakma area, in Abokuta, where I know that we already have another one just about two kilometers away, I will tell him, that please you cannot budget for this. Let us put it yes. in uh, Onikonobu, for example, because that is where they need it. But in a case where I don't have a relationship with the minister, I can just do it myself. Okay, that's where the problem is. But if I call the minister and explain to him properly and tell him that this would be a waste of money and a waste of the, the available space in my own community. If he's uh, interested in progress, he will agree, and we can't change that. So it's a matter of communication. So what do you mean by relationship, or what does relationship mean? Because it is expected that these are two legal separate institutions that must work together at a point, whether you like yourself or not. Yes, but what I'm saying is ego must not come in. It's a matter of we must know that we just want to make sure the people get the best from their government. And the way they can get the best is a good working relationship that we can always understand the problem of the people and we put human face to everything. Nothing is reached. Let, let's talk about your own committee. Very key, very important to the lives and development of Nigeria, the health uh, committee. The National Health Insurance Scheme, of course, we saw what happened with the executive secretary during the year. Are you satisfied with the state pursuit implementation of that project? Well, the National Health Insurance Scheme, I would say, is yet to take off appropriately. Because so far, it is only the formal sector that is operating. That is, only the government officials, the civil servants, and so on, that are, they have money being deducted from their salaries to ensure that they have health coverage in their particular location and um, Nigerians we, uh, over 170 million Nigerians uh, we have with about maybe 4 million Nigerians that are registered to the NHS. so I would say we haven't started and for us to start it needs very good funding and over the years we have realized that the government cannot do it alone because every year 
the amount budgeted for health keeps on going down. So if we know we want to have a good health system in this country, every Nigerian must contribute something towards that NHIS fund. All right, uh, let's check out the next story. This is one of the low points of the of events in the national in the Senate in year 2017. Uh, let's get to what you think about this. But at the point, the Senate formally decided, declared uh, what I, I don't want to use that word, let's say, Luther with the executive over the Mago and other issues like this. Well, this issue has been flogged uh, continuously. And uh, it's a real distraction from the main issues of this country. Uh, give it to the Senate. We are just trying to ensure that the system is maintained, that if the Senate, appointed by the people and the Constitution, says that this Senate is in charge of approving whoever is to go into any office. I believe whatever their judgment is, it should be adhered to. And if there are going to be something otherwise, it should be a negotiation with executives. And also something that looks very clear to everybody. So there are reasons for not approving a MAGU if there's a contrary opinion from the executives as to they have come to say all these reasons are null and void. Then I believe it should be fair to the system that they should leave Magu alone. But if there's no contrary opinion from the executives as to the reason why they said it should not be, then I believe they should, there should be mutual respect. And um, like I said, it's a, a distraction from no water, no light. So let us face the main issues of this country. Okay, uh, but some people will say corruption is also a major reason why we do not have water, we do not have no light. So we also have to tackle corruption so that we can have water and light. I believe Mr. President is doing a good job on corruption. Mm. Yes, but I did. All right, uh, uh, you help us take the next one because it, uh, they are similar. I want the senator to take the two together. Uh, Senator Tedio Cho, first the Ali Ndume uh, story. I was excited to manage to uh, ask you to speak to that uh, I said that on that of uh, Senator Dino you know, is too many Nigerians outside the National Assembly. Many of these reaction positions are sure of echo and attend by members of the National Assembly, Senators as representatives, to see themselves in a different class. With the other Nigerians. That's um, 
the opinion of many people expressed publicly about those two events, the Ali implement suspension and then the direction of the Senate to denote recall process by its constituents. Yeah, I want your reaction. Yeah, well, I, I am uh, of a different opinion in terms of how we use our time in this country. Um, I try to shy away from discussing issues that will not put food on the plate of the people, that will not make fuel consumption, and to put it in abundance. We spend so much time discussing personalities and personalities, but we are not talking about how we will never have problems of fuel again in this country and so on. So I believe we have laws to guide us on all these processes. The Indume case is uh, still in court, I guess. So I believe it will be something to be talking about to me, about me now, because the case is in court. And uh, in uh, democracy, it's a matter of numbers. If uh, we put the discussion on the table, on the floor of the Senate, and the majority think this is what should be done, the minority will lose. And that's the way it is, democracy. So, and once the decision has been made, whether you're a minority or majority, you have to support that decision. Well, so, what about the Dino Melayes case, Mr. Dino Melayes issue? Yes, it's, same, it's similar. Well, some people will say, yes, personality is involved, but it's a test on a section of the Constitution. The National Assembly is an institution right. made, built by the Constitution. And we cannot have a senator without a constituent, like you just said, representing the people. So it's not just there as an individual. So, and that test of that portion of the Nigerian constitution that the senators appear not to have favored appears to be an affront on the people themselves, which is an institution and so on. Um, can you please let me know how the senators... No, the position, um, like we said, uh, the deputy senator president, um, and of course that appears to be the body language of many of the uh, uh, senators uh, preferring that the process of recall should be stopped in favor and things work in favor of uh, their colleague. Uh, we saw the court uh, pursuit and also so on and so on. Then the position of the, at least from uh, Senator Ikure Madu, is that whatever is done by his constituent will still have to be vetoed in court at the floor of the Senate. Well, uh, the Deputy Senate President is a lawyer and um, he interpreted the law uh, according to his own understanding. And uh, I believe that particular matter also went to court. And um, I don't think uh, it has been concluded. So we are all learning to know. No, it's left court now. It's yes. INEC is hanging on the, the neck of INEC. Yes, so, so is we are also learning uh, to know exactly what is uh, correct to do in this matter. So uh, I believe we should leave it to the legal... Uh, I, I understand what you are saying, Senator Tedo. So just like I will agree with you that some of these things can be tagged as personal. But like I said, the moment you become a senator, you are a public person. You have lost many of your personal rights. Is that not so? Yeah, I agree with you. So uh, should they not then be subjected to public scrutiny, everything they do? Yes, but uh, for subjected, uh, guided by the law. All right, let's take out the next uh, story. Okay, plenary rule. Um, you see, I, I really want you to comment on it because we watch. Many of us, many of the people have had the opportunity to uh, watch live the plenary, but many people only watch via the television screens. And when they see those empty seats, and when they see some distinguished senators chatting away, talking, when somebody is trying to make a point, it does not bring good pictures to the people, and maybe this is what the Senate President saw on that day 
when he raised uh, this. How can this be stopped apart from the Senate President's uh, style he, he, that is proposed? Uh, first of all, uh, on the issue of empty seats, uh, I'll tell you that the capacity of the chambers is times three of the number of senators. Okay, the, the, the place is bigger than uh, the number. Okay, than the number. Yes. So uh, at, at any time, you know, always be seen six. Six. Because we have about 109 senators and we have a capacity of maybe about 400 mm -hmm. six. seats. So that is the issue of the uh, capacity sitting. Um, on the issue of um, senators uh, disturbing plenary, I believe it's not every day. And after the senators are human beings. And just like you have in the classroom, the teacher will always be saying, keep quiet. Yeah, these are senior students. So. Uh, well, no matter senior or junior, okay. there are always issues that they that they want to talk about from time to time. But of course, we are learning every day, and we also know that uh, we need to show good example. So every day we are improving. Thank you. All right, we still have uh, some headlines. So this uh, revenue chain formula has been one turning issue. Each time it comes up, people come with argue from different positions. The Niger Delta will argue from his own position. The North will argue from their own ground. A Lagosian will argue, may argue from a different uh, position. And when the Senate decides to do something about it, what is turning it? Why is the Senate not pursuing this with vigor? Well, like you know, it's, a, it's still also a constitutional issue. The Senate on its own cannot. You can begin the process again, just like the amendments we've done. But we need to have a realistic, a realistic uh, uh, position on this matter, because you can't have states that have uh, population explosion having the same amount of allocation year in year out, despite the exclusion. There's a lot of migration of uh, Nigerians from some areas to some area. That area that is being overpopulated must be considered in terms of a review of uh, allocation. There are so many local governments in Nigeria that cannot even afford to pay their salaries. So we have to put a very good human face to what we are doing to ensure that there's equity and also there is satisfaction of the people that put, uh, that put us in this position. That is part of the structure. All right, at this point, let's permit you. Our esteemed listener, you asked for it. We are, we are giving it to you. Distinguished Senator Larry Tedjo to serve with us. Senator representing Ogun Central at the 8th Assembly. We open the telephone lines, another means of contact for you. Let's get what you think questions from him, but please keep to the house style. 0809. 86873444 and 0909146 You can also join us via the short code 32120. That's the number to send your message to, but type ROCK first and then those message. Uh, please, the Twitter handle is there working. It's at Rock City FM and of course, our Facebook fan page is also there. Please, um, like I also say, decorum, civility. No insult, no abuse on any individual personality as you make your comment. Don't come up with claims you cannot substantiate. God bless you. Quickly, let's begin to take your calls and reaction. Mark the radio, deal with it, please. Thank you. Morning. Hello. Uh, okay. Hello, next person. Morning. Good morning. Thank you. Honorable right, Fatoki, please, can you just move around where you are? That line is breaking. Oh, it's clearer, better now.
I thank you, uh, Honorable Pat. Okay. Oh, oh, thank you. The next call. Let's start this. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kaiser. Morning. Thank you. Uh, you said two questions. Can we go to the next one? You have less than 30 seconds. All right, thank you. 0809868734. We'll take this call. Morning. Thank you, sir. Emergency powers for Mr. President to tackle the state of economy. We add this and then go and check uh, messages. Okay, we'll drop, drop a hello. Hello? 08098687344. Okay, can we check message while we are with that? Good morning. You still need to further move away from the radio, sir. Quickly, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we we'll move. Let, let's move away from the telephone lines temporarily. Um, can you just add some of the messages? We'll come back to the show. Good morning. Good That, that's if it chooses to uh, respond to that is out of what we are sorting. I'm sorry, we need to keep to the side. So I tell you, there are so many there, but let's pick this one. Uh, we will we'll soon take a break. Uh, so, can I have your reactions to issues? Please? Um, first of all, um, I will start with the uh, issue of constituency projects. Um, the, the, the person that asked the question says, uh, you are trying to increase to 2.3%. Um, I believe the first problem we have with this constituency project is that Nigerians don't really have the full grasp of what this project is. First of all, there is no senator that can implement any project in the constitution. 
in this government. So all we can do is to say, my people, they need this transformer in this community. Put it in the budget, Mr. Minister. The, the senator is not the one to go and buy it. The senator is not the one to even recommend contractor in a decent society. And the, a senator that is worth being called a senator will not be the one to be saying, Minister, yeah, this okay. contractor. Okay, but we know the problems of the people. And the constituency project is supposed to be what the people really want. The minister in Abuja. All right, it is excuse me. I'm sorry we have uh, to take this break. That's why the signal will be back. Uh, the senator will take reactions. We'll be back after the 10 o'clock news. Please stay tuned. Oh, yes, uh, it's good to know that you are still there. They break your rock city 101.9 FM here in the city of Abekta. Yes, 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 this is the voice of the people and citizens forum. We are doing a review of 2017 in the national. Assembly and we have the Senator representing Ogun Central at the 8th Assembly, Senator Larry Tedru Show. Uh, we thought before that break, you were talking about, you were responding to questions raised on constituency projects, Senator Tedru Show. Yes. Can we continue from that point? Well, the summary is, I uh, was trying to re explain what the constituency project means. Constituency project is supposed to be a project introduced by a senator or a member of our of representatives uh, because of his own knowledge of his constituency. For example, the minister who comes from maybe Bauchi State wants to uh, do the budget for Nigeria. In my own constituency, he decides to put uh, a waterworks that we know we don't need because we have waterworks in that constituency. But because he has not visited, but he will decide for equity. I may never visit uh -huh. you. We have um, equity of the six geopolitical zones, and he wants to put uh, water works in every zone. And then we will tell him that, okay, my people, it is not water that is the main problem now. It is light. Please, can you let us put transformers for them? Put it in the constituency project. Because I know that is what... I will help to tell my people that I, I influenced in Abuja for them. Okay, knowing what they really need. And even in introducing that called transformer, I cannot buy it. The budget is for the minister to go and buy. So we never touch the funds. We never dictate who the contractor should be, unless there is a connivance between the minister and the Senate. So money does not go to the to to senators or honorable members at so. all. So it's as if now that okay, if we are there, the people are telling us every day when we come back home there are problems. So if we can't do anything about their problems, then they might as well not tell us anything. Because the only way we can solve their problem is by introducing that problem into the constituency project that the minister will now implement. We are not to implement it. So money does not come to the senator or the member of the reps. So that's the constituency project. Uh, the other question again about communication between the executive and legislature. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, because of the various problems of the last one year uh, of individuals in the Senate and uh, the frosty relationship uh, caused by all these distractions, the communication was not good enough. But as time went by, the executives realized the importance of the communication. Likewise, the legislature realized the importance. And I would say the communication is getting better by the day. Otherwise, we would have been having the progress being made by this country because progress is being made despite the challenges. Mm -hmm. So I believe communication is improving. Someone mentioned about emergency power for Mr. President to tackle the economy. I believe, Mr. President, if you request for emergency power, the National Assembly will look at it favorably if that will solve our problem. But we are here to receive any request for emergency power from Mr. President. All right, we'll go back, reopen the telephone line 08098687344 and 0909146967. Short code down 32120. That's where to send your message to after you have typed R O. CK. Twitter handle is at Roxy Somebody is there. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Morning, morning. All 
right at any ye. Morning. When you say promulgate, the individual cannot promulgate bill. Or, uh, do you want the entire bill promulgated by the Senate? Okay. All right, Adini. Quickly, there is time limit for this, please. You are already hitting two. All right, thank you. You are over to me. I have to stop you. With. Somebody else is waiting to also hear that. There are so many people, please. So we need to manage the time. I'm sorry about this. Hello. Hello. Yes, you are on. Your turn. Thank you, Kasali. Good morning. Zero is zero nine eight six eight seven three four four. Uh, okay, we'll just try that. I'm sorry. Try again. Somebody else is there. Morning. Hello, you are on. Good morning. Thank you, sir. All right. Morning. New Nigeria, we didn't get that, uh, Isa. New Nigeria, what? All right, okay. Thank you. New Nigeria Patriotic Bill. Okay. Hello. Hello, morning. Morning, you are on. Good morning. Thank you, sir.
right, thank you, Gaffer. All right. Okay, two issues. Uh, the first one, I think he's talking about the oversight function, and the other one, he says uh, no need for the too young to not too not too young to rule bill. Okay, let's start this one. We we'll check message it, and we we'll permit the senator to also take his response. Hello. Thank you, sir. Emeka, good morning. Again, we are not discussing this Mapoli issue to the same the senator chooses to speak on it. Otherwise, I am overruling it. Let's check uh, messages, please.
<laughs> okay. Yeah, hold on. Let's take the break. Uh, we'll come back to that. Keep sending them. Let's see which of them we can attend to as quickly as we can. Um, somebody is talking about the oversight uh, function and then the poor implementation of the budget, which I think can be merged. Can you start with that? Well, I mean, um, I think it was Mr. Gaffar. Gaffar, uh, yes. Um, regarding oversight function on constituency projects, right? This same constituency project that um, some people think is faulty, it's now being implemented by the executives, not the, the assembly, so, not the legislator. So we can just keep on making noise, going to inspect what they've done, and to let them know that uh, it's important they finish the project or even start it when they uh, decide to do it. So we propose the constituency project and it's left to them to do it. We'll keep on doing our work. On the issue of salaries, uh, being part-time for senators and for, camera, uh, yeah, for, for us to do, be working on part-time. I personally am in support of that. I'm in, I'm in support of not even paying senators at all. But you must allow senators to continue doing their business. Most of us, in fact, all of us, we have businesses we've been doing before we became senators. But according no, to the obviously, law, if it's a part law, time, you can uh, go back and According to the law, we are supposed to close down all our businesses. We are supposed no, okay. to close down your account. So you are supposed to just focus only on whatever is given to you at the Senate. So legally, you have no choice but to expect you to be paid on the Senate since you are going to close down all your mm. businesses. All your international businesses will close down. I shall again. So, <laughs> you, you, something must come from somewhere. But at the same time, what you are spending on the people that come around you is much more than what uh, even you get. How can saying. we stop that? Yes. Because please. I understand that that is actually one of the uh, main oiling of corruption. Because the moment you become a councillor, which is the least, uh, with due respect to councillors, the least uh, political, elected political post. You become an automatic uh, leader and sponsor of the party there and the community. You just talk it. People will come to for the payment of their children's school fees, birthdays, burials, weddings, and also. How do you really stop that? What can be done? People have talked about provision of employment, right? But I know that we still have those who are employed who still come and yes. ask uh, for. Is it? It's just because of lack of really understanding by the people. A minister is more powerful than a senator in terms of providing dividends of democracy to the people. If someone in my constituency comes to me to me that they need a job at immigration or wherever there, the only thing I can do is to go cap in hands, to go beg the DG immigration, that please, can you give my person this job? Likewise, if we want any uh, employment or the children to go to the federal schools and so on like that. I cannot instruct. All I have to do is go to Minister of Education and appeal, beg. Senator, so, I tell you, so, uh, because we have to go by the time. Uh, I will, can we look at maybe the question? What is taking for is as elected senior elected people, you become leaders and uh, senior citizens of Nigeria. What efforts are being made to provide job employment from the individual's position? not waiting for government, not waiting for constituent authority. But all we see is, uh, is it empowerment? You distribute or uh, cada distribute uh, sewing machine and all sorts. Well, I would say... Which are not sustainable employment. Right. I would say uh, there are more than enough laws coming out of the National Assembly or that have come out in the past that are very good laws to create a very good employment environment for Nigerians. But the issue is, for example, there are so many people that even we appeal to people to employ, they come back to us maybe after three or four months that they haven't been paid. At the end of the day, you keep on dipping your hands in your pockets to even give them money after they've been employed. Because they said they will finish their money going to the office, and yet the office is not paying. The uh, inability of the MDAs to pay salaries is a major issue. Because they will say the, the, the country hasn't got the money. But we keep on forcing them employ employ when they don't have money to pay them. 
So the real problem is how we are going to improve the economy of this country. How we are going to make sure that we are able to pay as a when due. And we have enough uh, income uh, generation so that there will be money to pay them. So employment on paper is, is there. Okay, but this institution, do they have money to pay them? The question. Hmm. All right. Uh, we'll go back, take more calls from 0 0 9 8 6 8 7 3 4 4. Senator Lani Ted, you should stay there with us. We are reviewing events in the National Assembly for the year 2017. Good morning. Somebody, good morning. Uh, the radio, the radio, the radio quickly in its jiffy. Have you done that? Hello, sir. Morning. Smith. No, what's your name, sir? Oh, quickly, Nicholas, one minute. Yes, he is. Well, that's our position this morning, and that is the way it's going to go. We are not discussing my police, not that. Uh, so, good morning. Thank you. Morning. Thank you. Why, why, quickly? Thank you. Thank you. Zero eight zero nine eight six eight seven three four four. Let's add your voice. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Morning. All right. Let's go. What, what is that figure? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you. Zero nine zero nine one four six. We take two calls. Check the messages again. Yes, you are on. Somebody. Thank you, sir. 
We are fine. You have less than two minutes, sir. Huh? We have Senator Larry Ted you Ted you show here. Morning. Thank you. Your, your questions are your two minutes is almost off. All right, thank you. Making elections easier in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, do we have somebody standing? Don't let us show the person on. Hello, morning. After this, we'll move away from the telephones. Morning. All right, under two minutes, or like that, let's have you. Good morning. About what? The bill about what, Olaika? Oh, okay. The special uh, corruption tribunal. Okay. That's in the third show. You want to respond to any of the issues of Mumbai? Oh, well, I mean, the issue of uh, the and um, money. Yes. I believe. The bone of contention that could be solved very easily is just for the DSS to write a letter to the Senate that they have withdrawn all the yeah, earlier reports. Earlier reports, and this is the case. A very simple letter. I believe the system will be uh, amended, and there is no reason for the Senate not to approve now if they can withdraw that. Otherwise, because there is no one that comes for. Uh, uh, what's called screening in the Senate, that uh, DSS report is not critical. So if now they say DSS report is no longer critical, then let them withdraw it, and then that will flow. So I believe it's a very simple matter. On the Minister of Works coming to discuss his budget, and for the Senate slashing, it's not a matter of the Senate slashing. It's a matter of what is available for this year, 2017. And you can see that with the proven rights that even the what was uh, approved, but they, they, couldn't, they couldn't pay for it. So, I mean, it's in the wisdom of the committee that look, if you say you want 30 billion, and we see that you can't afford more than 10 billion this year, as that's the measure of finance, why must we put 30 billion just to show that we are putting 30 billion on, on paper? So, but people do not understand this minor details. That's all, this all right, interesting to me. Somebody asks, um, and I think uh, there are facts too uh, that, that we have different committees investigating one national issue or the other, and, the, and all we see is the committee in action but not the committee's report. Well, I mean, that I, I don't know what they mean by that because there's no committee that will begin a work that. Please. So investigating, for, for instance, um, this oil subsidy thing has been on and on and on, the issue between 12 and 200, we've not heard anything about it. That's one committee set up by National Assembly, no report uh, is coming up from it. Even the so-called uh, the Senate, I think did set up a committee on this Ali in Dume allegation, and then nothing is coming up from it. Well, the Ali Dumi allegation uh, suddenly is now in court. 
and uh, so I mean, we're waiting for any case that is in court in the community. All right, the health sector, somebody also wants to find out how do we stop uh, health stories in flight or medical those who wants to seek uh, medical treatment abroad, how do we stop it? Well, we don't yeah, have to remember we, that community. Yes, we, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. In 2001, countries in Africa sat down together and said, for you to have a good health system, your budget for health must be at least 15% of the total budget. With that, you are assured that your system will be above average. All African countries came. They called it Abuja Declaration. The meeting was in Abuja in 2001, 16 years ago. Countries as small as Swaziland, Botswana, they are already doing 15%. And there are countries now are tourism destination for medical. Now, Nigeria, we have never gotten up to 5% since 2001. And even the 5%, maybe we release only about 2.5%. So we don't need to go too far to see why we are failing. So let us first of all fund our budget for health. Then we now see whether there's improvement or not. Look, this year alone, the, 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 about 10 billion was proposed to, 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 to improve about three or six hospitals in uh, 2017. Only about 15% of the money was released. So we need to really take funding of health very seriously. Okay. Uh, messages. Let's uh, check the messages. Sorry, yeah, sorry, those, those are claims, please. I've said it. We don't take, we don't take claims that you cannot sort and say, please. Okay, can, can you talk about uh, that, the youth opportunities, and also interestingly, you were once commissioner for uh, youth as well, so can, can you just talk on uh, what you just said? Well, I mean... Uh, talk about more opportunities for uh, the youth. Uh, I don't know, I think my you need to put that, but I don't know whether in politics, in governance, or whatever. Okay. You want to say something? Well, that's, just, of it, that's just a, well. a typical example of what we are talking about. These are my people telling me what they need. If I now go to the budget and see that irrelevant provisions are made, instead of the real things that people want, they will, put, they will start to terminate as maybe you are adding or you are adding some things to it. But how do we satisfy the people if we cannot talk about what they need? 
or even contributes to what they are putting the budget for them. We don't have any projects to put to do any road or to provide power. But of course, within what we have, we are doing our bit. I mean, to buy transformers and there, with the, your, what, what you have. But the government executive there wants with the pocket. So quickly, Senator Chair, let, let's uh, further get access on this insertion into the budget. One, how is it done? What does it mean? And some people have said the budget should come from the legislators to the executive. We are talking about you are the representative. You are the ones who know what exactly they need. So, uh, can you educate us? Can you okay, the, 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 a typical insertion would be this gentleman now that talked about the road from Funap, that the road is bad. And I go there and I say, and I inspect and I see. When I get to Abuja, I'll go to the Minister for Works or the Committee for Works in the Senate and tell them this problem in my constituency. Please, can you provide for this road construction? Because it is what the people want. Okay, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Works will now approach the Minister for Works and tell him that there's a request for this. If their relationship is good enough, this is important for the people. Then they insert it in the budget. That is insertion. Okay. Telephone lines 0098687344 for somebody. We are gradually getting close to the coast. Good morning. Morning, morning. Your name? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you, Alaji. We only have uh, five minutes uh, for this, please. So we'll take two minutes from you or two calls and then come back to Senator. Just two calls. One, morning. Morning. Thank you. All right, thank you. One call more, the last four. Hello. Yeah. Morning, quickly. Let's do this. All right, Mr. Shergun. Shergun. Morning. your question do you think they deserve a second term that's the question all right uh, thank you oh okay do you think we need you okay you are talking about whether we should change the present style to uni uh, camera legislator all right thank you Thank you very much. We won't be able to take any other phone call. Messages, please.
All right. Uh, I think they've said they will need the approval of the National Assembly to take that. That's uh, the answer to that. They will. Uh, the executive will need the approval of the Senate before they can give the hand of correct, sir. Yes. Okay. So let's address all that issue. So you have you have a message? Okay. Quickly. All right, Senator Todo, we just have two minutes uh, for the program. Two minutes, uh, Senator Todo. Yes. Um, first of all, uh, the issue of the health center at uh, Olomore mm. um, is just repeating myself yet again uh, that we had so many health centers budgeted for for 2017 for improvement. Even the minister has been making noise about yes, it. So the health center part of this. Yes, yeah, all, all, all across the country. Okay. And uh, of course, we all know that the budget was just uh, the 15 percent that was released just in November of 2017. So really, we will not be seeing any improvement until maybe around March when so the money when the money is available for 2017 budget. So everything has to do with money. Yeah. The issue of bicameral uh, uh, camera, I mean, <laughs> the people are the ones that said they wanted this type of democracy. If they don't want it, they should do the right thing and let us go ahead. Anything that will help the economy of Nigeria, I support. So if that will help our people, let us go for it. The Peace Corps bill was the stage. The Peace Corps bill, I believe we have advanced uh, in that bill process. And um, the issue of funding for it, I believe, is what is giving people cold feet. And somebody also said a petition was sent to you on severance. Yes. Uh, allowance. Well, uh, for for the state the government. Of that. Yes. yes. Well, all we have to do is uh, appeal to the state government, which we have done. And uh, we expect everything has to do with money. All right, yes. Yes, I don't know. All right, and of course, uh, maybe just uh, as the year it's ending, uh, to do your message that's all for you quickly. Well, it's a matter of um, to thank our people for the patience because uh, for you to be in Nigeria today, you must be very patient in terms of uh, dividends of democracy that you expect. So you have been patient thus far with this government. Uh, all team. right, then we thank uh, everybody. And I say it's been a wonderful 52 weeks on the program, uh, the Daybreak Show. Uh, tomorrow, this, this is the last for the area, so tomorrow is the open day. We appreciate everybody, and I must thank all the crew. There are so many of them, the ones you do not regularly hear. They are but without them, uh, the program may not be as uh, important as uh, uh, sweetening as you feel it. Tokwe Ajala, Wale Ogumbi, Kayode Ajayi, Volaji Samson, Modina, and of course, uh, my guys, Kokumbo Olon Tola, the Executive Director, Bola Malalu, and the CEO, Dr. Nero Malalu. We all say thank you for being there. Dele Ayodo is my name. I say God bless you all. God bless Nigeria and God bless Rock City FM.